In the personal story segment tonight, do you believe in God? Increasingly, fewer Americans do. According to a Pew poll, 12% of us do not have a belief in a higher power, up from 8% in 1987, and that group includes agnostics. In Europe, the rise of atheism and agnosticism is stunning. According to a Zuckerman study in Sweden, as many as 85% of the population are non-believers. Japan, 65%. France, 54%. And in Britain, 44% do not believe in God in Great Britain. This now is a man who understands that position. Richard Dawkins, the author of the mega-selling this book, The God Delusion. I think it takes more faith to be like you, an atheist, than like me, a believer, and it's because of nature. You know, I just don't think we could have lucked out to have the tides come in, the tides go out, sun go up, sun go down. Don't think it could have happened. We have a very full understanding of why the tides go in, the tides go out, about, of why the continents drift about, of why life is there. Science is ever more piling on the evidence, piling on the understanding. But it had to get there. I understand that you, you know, the uh, physiology of it, if, if you will, but it had, to, it had to come from somewhere. And that is the leap of faith that you guys make, that it just happened. Well, a leap of faith, you don't actually need a leap of faith. You, you're the one who needs a leap of faith because you are actually, you, the onus is on you to say why you, do, you believe in something. There's an infinite number of gods you could believe in. I take it you don't believe in Zeus or Apollo or Thor. You believe in presumably the Jesus. Christian god, Jesus. So Jesus yeah. was a real guy. I could see him. Yeah. You know, I know what he did. And so I'm not positive that Jesus is God, but I'm throwing in with Jesus rather than throwing in with you guys because you guys can't tell me how it all got here. You guys don't know. We're working on it. Physicists are oh, When you get it, then maybe I'll listen. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, if you look at the history of science over the, over the centuries, yeah. the amount that's, that's gained in knowledge each century is stupendous. In the beginning of the 21st century, we don't know everything. We have to be humble. We have to, in humility, say that there's a lot that we still don't know. And, you know, being humble is a Christian virtue. Well, so there you go. Of it is. All right. When you guys figure it out, then you come back here and tell me, because until that time, I'm sticking with Judeo-Christian philosophy and my religion of Roman Catholicism because it helps me as a person. Oh, that's different. If it, you know, if helps. it helps you, absolutely. Great. And that doesn't mean it's true. And, yeah. Well, it's true for me. You see, I, I believe... You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else? Have yeah, something to absolutely, true you? because I can't Something's prove... either got to be true or not. I can't... No, no. I can't prove to you that Jesus is God. So that truth is mine and mine alone. But you can't prove to me that Jesus is not. So you have to stay in your little You can't prove system. that Zeus is not. You can't prove that Apollo is not. Well, I saw Apollo, man. He's the, he was down there. He's not looking good. Now... We also differ in the sense that you feel that religion has been a bane, B-A-N-E, to civilization. And I feel atheism has. And I will point to the worst mass murderers in uh, modern times, Hitler, Stalin, Mao, and Pol Pot. All confirmed atheists. All people who wanted to wipe out religion. Now, I know you can point to the Crusades and you can point to Al-Qaeda right now. I mean, it's there and there's no question. But I say... That I'm thrown in with the founding fathers of the United States, which saw religion, spirituality, as a moderating influence, as a good thing if people embrace the true tenets. Go ahead. Founding fathers of the United States were secularists above all. So some of them were religious, some of them were not, but they were above all secularists who believed in keeping church and state. They separate. had to because of the oppression in Europe. That was what they were. That right. Precisely. But I mean, that was almost they were all of them. They all said a prayer before their deliberations. In their letters, and I have almost all their letters, they all reference the deity. Our Declaration of Independence references heavily. But they saw it as a moderating influence because the federal government at that point couldn't control the country. And they said, you know, if yeah. people follow Jesus, then the country's going to be better. It may well be a moderating influence. As for Hitler and Stalin and so on, I mean, of, of course, Hitler, by the way, was a Roman Catholic. No, he never was. was. He was raised in that home. Yeah, well, but he, he rejected he, it early okay. on. We can, we can dispute that. Um, Stalin was an atheist, no question. Uh, but Stalin did the bad things he did, not because he was an atheist. I mean, Hitler and Stalin uh, both had moustaches, but we don't <laughs> say it was their moustaches that made them evil. I don't think they had any moral foundation, any of those guys. I will I say... I either. Your book is fascinating. And, you know, congratulations on your success. Thanks for coming on in here. Thank you very much.